and loose build. Holy crap balls, this is fast. <laughs> Back in 2002, Porsche launched the Cayenne. It was one of the cars that kick-started the age of the SUV. And importantly for Porsche, it was such a success, it actually saved the company from financial ruin. Where it mattered for car enthusiasts though, is that Porsche being Porsche, it was an SUV built not just to do some light off-roading, but to be fun. There was a diesel, various V6s and a V8 as standard, but at the top of the range was the Turbo S. It was a beast. Its 4.5 litre turbocharged V8 had 520 horsepower and it could hit 62 miles an hour in five seconds dead. Now, nearly 20 years after the first Cayenne, there's a new one and it's this, the Cayenne Turbo GT. And if the original Turbo S was a silverback gorilla, this is King Kong. It isn't the most powerful Cayenne. That title goes to the Turbo SE Hybrid, with 680 horsepower thanks to a 4-litre twin-turbo V8 paired to an electric motor. But it is the fastest. It too has a 4-litre twin-turbo V8, but there's a new crankshaft, new connecting rods, and new pistons. There are tweaks to the turbos, fuel injection, intercooler, and more too. The result is 640 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 850 newton meters of torque from 2300 to 4500 rpm and as a result of that 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 3.3 seconds and the top speed is 186 miles an hour 186 now what does 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.3 seconds in a cayenne feel like well let's find out shall we come to a stop Standard Porsche launch control procedure. Left foot on the brake as hard as it can go, right foot on the accelerator, wait for the boost to build. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's addictive and slightly ridiculous. Goodness gracious. It's monstrously fast. Monstrously fast. You have to keep reminding yourself that you're in a car that is longer than a Bentley Continental GT and weighs 2,220 kilos. It's a porky Porsche. And what you get in this that you get much less of in the more powerful turbo SE hybrid and none at all in, say, a Taycan, is noise. Lots and lots of noise. It's a dirty, dirty sound. You get centre tailpipes on the Turbo GT and everything from the centre of the car backwards, exhaust-wise, is made from titanium. And, to top it off, Porsche has entirely deleted the central silencer. I thoroughly approve of that decision. <laughs> You can only have the Turbo GT in the coupe body style, which is a bit of a shame really because I think the regular more boxy Cayenne is actually better looking. But what you do get is a bigger, more aggressive face for better cooling. You also get these black wheel arch extensions, huge 22 inch alloy wheels, a carbon fibre roof, a rear spoiler that is unique to the Turbo GT, and the adaptive rear wing has been extended by 25 millimeters compared to the regular turbo. The ride height has been dropped by 17 millimeters. The three chamber air suspension has been tweaked and it's now 15% stiffer in its firmest setting. There's more negative camber. The power steering has been modified too, as has the rear axle steering, the front axle, the anti-roll system, the eight speed automatic gearbox and the all wheel drive system. The wheels, meanwhile, aside from being massive, are a full inch wider, surrounded by Pirelli P0 Corsa tyres. Standard fit are carbon ceramic brakes. So, how does it drive, aside from the lunacy that lurks under the bonnet? Well, first of all, drive modes. Drive modes is kind of the key to unlocking this car's potential because you've got a little wheel down here on the steering wheel where you can go through the various drive modes. You've got normal, sport, sport plus, and individual, standard Porsche. In normal, 
the suspension has got actually a reasonable amount of travel to it. The car can be quite relaxed because it changes everything. The steering, the gearbox, everything changes when you move through these drive modes. Go through to Sport Plus and then the ride is at its firmest and the car is very much in full shouty mode. <laughs> it corners in a way that something this big this heavy, this tall, really just shouldn't. It baffles you a little bit, because it's still so flat. <laughs> you don't feel massively connected, but still, it's just brutal in the way it gets down the road. Gearbox, eight speed auto, and it is fast. Very, very fast, on the way up and the way down. Not quite as fast as PDK, by a small margin, but not far off. And the brakes, it feels like you're trying to stop a church, but they do stop you. The only slight irritation is that this one has been a little squeaky, but you know, carbon ceramic, sometimes you get that. And the steering, it's a little uncertain just off center. You notice it particularly when you're on the motorway. Just make a little movement and it, doesn't really feel like you're connected to anything. But with more lock-on, immediately, it feels, feels like Porsche steering. It's very accurate, very well-weighted. You just trust it. One other thing to note is Sport Response. It's a system you get on a 911 Turbo S where you've got your wheel for the drive modes. In the middle of that is a button. In this, it's red. It's very inviting. Press it and the car goes from being nice and chilled, because we're in normal at the moment, to being very awake immediately. And you get 20 seconds of the car just being full attack mode, most aggressive. So if you ever need to overtake someone, you're in one of these, press that, and you'll be soaring down the road. <laughs> oh, it's bullish. Inside, there's a thoroughly sporty feel. The Turbo GT is a strict four-seater with healthy buckets front and rear to keep everyone in place when you're driving like you're on the Nordschleife. Which, if you're interested, the car will do in seven minutes and 38 seconds. There's Alcantara everywhere, with Turbo GT lettering on full display on the seat headrests, while there's a yellow marker at the 12 o'clock on the steering wheel. There's also a new Porsche communication management system with a new interface, better performance and Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay for the first time. What to make of the Turbo GT? Well, my first feeling is bemusement because no one needs this. No one needs this in the same way no one needed the original Cayenne Turbo S. But the main feeling is astonishment because it's a big, brutal, muscly monster that has no place doing the things it does and just because no one needs it doesn't mean I'm not very glad it exists. <laughs>